Hi, and welcome to the Catholic Connect. I'm your host, Fire Chief Scott Freitag, and my special guest today, back with us once again, is Training Captain Eric Merrill. Yeah, thanks for having me. Glad hey, to Eric, be back. Eric, thanks for coming in. Yeah. So we, we have a timely topic that we wanted to talk about this week, and that is recruitment. Recruitment in the fire service in general, but uh, I say it's timely because our Recruit Academy just started on Monday, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of your baby. Oh yeah, oh man, we're, the juices are flying at Carta today. So we started on Monday, it's a nine week academy. We have seven brand new hires and uh, every single one of them I think was there. Uh, I told them don't be there any later than 7.30. Right. But it was like 6.40 and I think they were all banging on the gate to get in. Right. So uh, it's great to see that type of enthusiasm. Yeah, you know, I got a chance to visit with them a little bit yesterday mm -hmm. and I'll have a little more time with them in October mm -hmm. sometime, I can't remember the date, but- The 14th. Um, what a great group. It seems like a really good group of people. Um, I think we moved it from the 14th because I am. Yeah, we did. Yeah. I'm Rocktoberfest, Jeep trip and Kingman. Sorry. Yeah, priorities. Yeah, it's a priority. I'm, I'm leaving this afternoon for Texas. Um, to go on another Jeep trip. Yeah. That said, you know, we, we've got a good group of people in. Mm -hmm. um, but what we tend to hear sometimes, especially when we're starting to recruit, and I don't think it matters the position, whether it's operations, administration, human resources, tech services. Um, how are we recruiting for positions? And that's actually what I wrote about in the review this week, because we are working on some things. But before we talk about what we're working on, let's talk a little bit about some of the challenges. What are some of the challenges you see with recruiting? Yeah, I think first is the number. Uh, okay. drastically lower than it has been over the years. And, uh, you know, there's a couple different uh, schools of thought, I guess, reasons why. Um, and, I, and I'm sure you've got some good ideas on that as well. But uh, the numbers is being the first one. And the second one is, is um, a little bit of the retention too. Right. How long are people staying? And it, and it kind of fluctuates on the positions as well. Well, I, I think, and, and some of my, my peers and I have, have talked about this because, you know, some of our folks will say, well, we're not competitive enough because we're not getting the numbers. Well, we just changed our wage scale. You know, next year we're gonna be at or close to the 75th percentile. Um, so we're competitive in the market, but we're not the only ones having some difficulty in recruiting, even Phoenix Fire Department, Scottsdale Fire Department. All the numbers are down across the board. And after 9-11, you had to stand in line to get into a recruit academy. There was this sense of community pride and commitment to, to service that existed and over the last 20 years a lot of that has waned mm -hmm. right and you just we're, we're not seeing that same commitment so there's fewer people willing to go into the fire service let law enforcement especially with what's going on right now mm -hmm. uh, nursing paramedic um, and it, beyond that it doesn't seem like people are really committed to any one career or employer anymore mm -hmm. I don't know about your parents but my dad, when he worked, he just, that's what he did. He worked for Jim Meager Chevrolet and that's where he worked. Yeah. Um, we're not seeing that anymore. Uh, it, how was it with you when you were growing up? Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and especially going in a small town, there weren't a lot of job <clears throat> options. Um, right. And our family was very blessed. My, my dad at the time, he had uh, owned and operated a car dealership. So, I mean, when you're the owner, that, that's, your, that's your baby. But, sure. uh, you know, he did what he could to take care of his employees and, and keep that retention. Right. I think some of the issues you have with retention is, uh, is when people don't stick around, well, now you have to take time and energy and money to retrain other people. Right. So sometimes there's a more cost-effective, um, you know, way to combat that by just taking care of the people you have, yeah. which, you know, like you had said, we do a great job with our labor management relationship, trying to find solutions and, right. and you know, gain ground and move forward with improving our conditions and our wage and benefits. And, and, and the reality is you're, we're never going to have the best of everything. Nobody has the best of everything because when we improve something, the next agency says, well, we want that. And then there's an improvement there. So you try to balance where we can do things and there's other, other areas we're working on. But it seems there's a cultural shift as well. Some of the statistics that we're seeing are that uh, uh, people today will change careers or change jobs seven times in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, I've changed jobs three times, but in the same career field and always to, to move up. Mm -hmm. um, it's different today. People are looking for positions where I wanna go into work 30 or 40 hours, and I wanna get out because I want family time. Mm -hmm. Totally understand that. We even have 
uh, it seems like people that are signing up for fire department jobs today that are coming in and saying, hey, I want to put in my 10 days and, and I'm out. There's not that commitment to community that existed years ago. And I understand there's a balance yeah. because when I started, um, I took the overtime. I worked on my days off as the PIO. I went to classes. I went to seminars. Everything I could to try to improve my ability and and uh, really hone my craft, so to speak, because this is a profession mm -hmm. and you have to be passionate about it. And I know you're someone that does the same thing. Yeah. I think Jody's probably ready to kill you because you're always gone. It's, you know, it goes in waves. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because, so, you know, the paycheck comes in and then everything's balanced out. But yeah, you're absolutely correct. And that's the thing is that we're afforded so many opportunities in the sure. fire service that, you know, if you do tend to maybe get bored in a position or, or I hate to say the word complacent, but there's so many avenues for you to either improve yourself. Um, there's other, you know, like say I'm, I'm a operations, I'm a firefighter, but yet I was able to transition to training captain. Right. But I'm also a PIO, fire investigator. Um, my side job when I was on the engine was literally being a training officer right. and picking up overtime. And I was probably more lucrative in that than if I had my own side business. Well, and I think that's one of the cool things about this profession that as we look at recruiting, we have to sell. Um, there's, a, along with the review writing about recruitment, the other, uh, the article that I found out of Fire Rescue One this week had to do with why are we seeing firefighters today grumbling in the fire station saying, this is not what I signed up for? And I think we as an organization have talked about that a lot. It goes back to that morale curve. There's the expectation of what the job is, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of fire departments market it with stuff blown up and yeah. fires and we're running in, we're saving everybody. Um, they're not showing the firefighter with a toilet brush. Mm -hmm. The firefighter cooking dinner, doing dishes, the, the things that we have to do around the fire station, uh, the fact that a lot of what we do are medical calls or calls for, for other types of service, the excitement, so to speak, of a structure fire, it's just it, we don't have as many because we've done a good job with prevention. Absolutely. Yeah, and you want to see our good people, you know, put a little bit more energy into the things like the public education, right. the prevention measures, because, you know, as much as we did sign up for the excitement, we don't want to see somebody struggling because their house burned down, right. they lost their belongings, things like that. So you've got to have, have a balance in there. But ultimately, we signed up because we just want to do the right thing. Right. We want to help people. I think that's the key. It's that 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 service component. And I think that's what we want to show in some of the things that we're doing right now that are in the works to say, hey, here's... Um, Here's the service that we provide. We have pride in what we do. Down to, uh, I remember my dad telling me a story. He went in the middle of the night to a call and uh, um, an elderly woman had lost her ring down the sink. So he pulled the trap off for her, got it out, gave it back to her, but they ended up just sitting there and visiting mm -hmm. because she was lonely. And I, for me, the, those calls never bothered me. Those calls were like, hey man, I, I got to make a difference. I got to meet a very cool person and spend some time with them. To me, that's part of our job. And and that part's exciting as well. But there's fewer of those. And I just did an exit interview uh, with one of our folks that retired and he said, you know, we. and I, I talked to someone else in our organization. They're like, I never saw people when I was coming up to the ranks that, that left the profession. So there's obviously something we're doing wrong. I'm going to disagree mm -hmm. because I think what we're seeing is a cultural change in our world. And the fact is we may have people who leave this profession to explore something else or want to move to a different state or, mm -hmm. Hey, this little benefit here might be a little bit better for me. Um, and, and that's, that's something we're going to have to get used to, especially since we, we no longer have residency requirements in the state. Mm -hmm. Um, people can live wherever they need to live. So we're hiring people that don't necessarily live in the community or they move from the community. Mm -hmm. um, we don't, we, we're challenged on the affordable housing and, and rental market. Yep. Um, if we could buy a hotel or an apart, a small apartment complex where we could temporarily put people up to attract them to work here, mm -hmm. we would, but we're a governmental entity. We can't do stuff like that. So uh, there are just, a number of things that we face with getting information out and and I think part of it is one we have to understand the new culture 
Mm-hmm. Right. We need to understand. We need to understand where people get their information. Uh, and we need to make the transition on how we recruit. Yeah, absolutely. We can control the narrative on how we want to recruit and who we want right. to recruit. Uh, I think the biggest thing with that is, and you said the word several times, it's culture. Right. You know, the beauty of culture is that it's it's evolving. It's constantly moving sure. and shifting. And that's that difference between culture and tradition, where tradition as, uh, as, as a great mentor of mine in the past uh, told me that tradition is ashes left behind from old fires. Yeah. There's nothing you can do with the tradition. It's there. It's in the past. We can learn from it. And it's, it's brilliant to have that in the back of our mind. But focus on the culture, which is the moving forward. Right. Well, and we have to uh, con- constantly, sorry, yeah. evaluate tradition to see if it still fits. Mm-hmm. There's things like uh, the leather buckets and doing the push-in yes. ceremony for the fire engine. That mm-hmm. is tradition, and we need to continue doing that. Um, you know, those types of things. And, but there's a sense of pride in this profession. There was a time when I was in Missouri that I was just so frustrated with where I worked that, you know, I was going to leave the profession. I was going to go do something else. Mm -hmm. And I got in my staff vehicle and I went to, to back out and I looked back and I saw my fire helmet in the back seat and that the sense of pride I had, it, it triggered me back to the first day I picked up my first fire helmet and it was sitting on the seat next to me in my mm-hmm. personal pickup. Uh, and I was I was so excited and proud yeah. at that moment. And that flood of, of feelings came back to me again. And I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna leave the profession, but I'm gonna leave where I work. And that's what led me out here yeah, or things like that. So we need people to understand those opportunities exist. So some of the things that we're, we're working on, right? Mm-hmm. We're gonna, we're gonna categorize uh, affordable housing or housing challenges as a wicked problem. Mm-hmm. Can't fix that. We're going to categorize. You, you can't require people to live in the area. So we're going to have people that live in the valley mm-hmm. and that's going to create some challenges. It's a wicked problem. We can't fix it, but we can try to develop a culture where people, even though they live further away, are committed to taking part. Yeah. They can still be involved in the community. Right. The other part of it is, you know, we haven't done great at really getting our job postings out there. And I'm not just talking about on the firefighter side, I'm talking about in general terms, because we're so used to hiring from a reserve pool that we've, we've made those transitions, but we didn't, we didn't transition where we're posting the jobs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a great sense of pride when you're a reserve because it was, it was volunteer basically. Right. And so you had this great sense of community you really did kind of manage your family time around this pager that you used to, right. used to have to carry. A lot of people don't know what pagers are anymore, but yeah, I know. <laughs> we, I know. we used to have to carry these on our belts. And when it would go off, then we would respond. And it right. was it was a very um, it was a very great way for a lot of our culture to um, you know I guess I guess be stemmed from because we have people that remember those right. days. Like you said, that perspective of you know how bad did you want that job? Yeah. How bad were you crawling and scratching at that door to try to get in? And then how long does it take for you to get to that point of you kind of forget what it felt like yeah. to be that hungry? Well, and l- let's be clear, because when you say that, that when we talk about we used to have reserves and you're talking about that commitment, someone who doesn't work for our organization, who may see or listen to this, they're they're going to say, well, why don't you have the volunteer mm-hmm. programs anymore? And there's a couple of reasons. One, culture shift. Mm-hmm. We just weren't getting people who wanted to be part of it um, Two, growth growth in the agency and number three and the most important one was thank you to a former uh federal presidential administration Mm -hmm. um that we were going to have to start paying all the benefits so Mm -hmm. it was no longer volunteer and controlling our cost it was actually costing us more than we were gaining from the program Mm -hmm. and so we just couldn't continue thank you federal government uh for sticking your nose in where you didn't need to Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sorry, that was political. No, it's okay, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we've transitioned there. So what we're doing now is, is determining what other websites can we use. And this last time around, we were really slow to start. Um, I got with Lacey in HR because Patty was out of town. I said, I want you to put this on these websites. And we started getting more hits. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested to talk to the recruits or if you can talk to them and find out where did you hear about the job? Yeah. Now, Andrew Kuntz, we know where he heard about the job. He's dad works here yeah we hired him anyways mike he's probably been running around these floors at some point oh yeah yeah it's great and and the legacy is awesome we love that um so 
it's important that we get our message spread out. Not just, again, not just on the operations side, as we've talked about, CAFMA is a system. So when we recruit, uh, we have to look at how do we recruit for tech services and firefighters and all of these different unique positions mm -hmm. that we have. Um, one of the other things that we're doing, and, and we've already changed the SOG, and on Monday the 27th, the board will be presented with the policy change, is we're recommending that we don't require Firefighter 1 and 2 anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to be a big shift uh, in, in a couple arenas, but especially in the training division, as far as where we are now doing a nine-week academy, this is the last time. Moving forward, without that requirement, we're going to have to then teach those certification skills um, in right. that academy, which is then going to extend the time. But I think it's healthy because it does remove some of those barriers and gives us a little bigger pool, yeah. which then we're now more uh, directed to hiring for your character and for our culture versus right. what certifications that you were able to apply yourself before. Well, and it does a couple other things for us as well. Um, one, it, it it widens the talent pool mm -hmm. that we have to choose from. Um, two, uh, there weren't enough people really coming out with Firefighter 1 and 2 mm -hmm. um, to meet the demand yeah. up in this area or in the valley. Three, it, it puts us more in line with those agencies that we are in direct competition with for quality employees because if you look at the valley and you look at the tucson area they don't require firefighter one and two and so they have a larger pool of people to choose from well we need to tap into that pool mm -hmm. the other side of this we're going to talk about the recruitment videos in a minute but alan brunacini years ago uh he identified collegiate athletes mm -hmm. and so phoenix fire started going to the colleges and and asking are you going professional are you going to be pro if not, do you want to be a professional athlete for your career? And if so, you should think about the fire department because here's what we do. And that attracted people. Mm -hmm. uh, Chief Polachek, before he left, him and I talked about that. So I talked to the athletic director at Yavapai College, and, and that gives us access to both men and women's sports. So we're spreading out, and we back that up a notch. We go to the high schools as well, which uh, Adam Wagner, who was on the podcast, um, he's taken on that program. Mm -hmm. So we go to those athletes, but what the Yavapai College uh, director told me for athletics, look, our athletes want to finish their collegiate athletic career, uh, and that doesn't allow them time to go through Firefighter 1 and 2. So if we truly want to attract those individuals, well, we have to, have to make something that uh, work Absolutely. for their schedule. Um, now, you still have to have EMT, but we wouldn't require Firefighter 1 and 2. So that opens the pool. Sure. Um, the other thing we're doing is creating a, a on our web page, there's going to be a page that is just recruitment. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a picture of you. Oh, gosh. Right there. Well, I you know, thought you wanted people to click on it. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to dress you up like that Uncle Sam from World War II. Okay, I could do that. You know, Uncle Sam, we're going to put you in that outfit. Deal. I'll do it. You know, yeah. uh, it, I'm a patriot. Let's do it. I think the visual will be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> But we're, that page is, re, we're really gonna promote that mm -hmm. um, to be able to do online applications, which we can't currently do. And that'll help people from out of state who might be interested in working here. Uh, it, and speaking of out of state, we uh, updated or adjusted the wording in our SOG and policy as well, so that it didn't require an Arizona driver's license up front or Arizona uh, paramedic or EMT, national registry, have to get your Arizona driver's license in six months. Yeah. It just clarifies. So uh, the page though, we're on the page, we're gonna have job descriptions, uh, benefits. We're also kind of the videos we're working on. And right now, the, over the last couple of days, we've had a production company working with us. Yeah. And they are fantastic. Shout out to 540 crew, Evan. Oh gosh, yeah. It's gonna uh, burn some calories yesterday. Oh my gosh, Evan and Kenny Turner, Leslie Harper came up on yeah. her days off to help us out. Yeah. Um, uh, John Apollinar mm -hmm. was here and I mean, they worked, I, I owe them. Yeah. We, we might have to bring some extra ice cream or something because they earned it by all yeah. the calories they burned, but well, I'm going to bring them, uh, I'm going to treat them all to lunch next week, uh, and ice cream. Okay. Very good. So it's all on me. Cause they're going to owe a lot of ice cream because they're on right. their celebrities now. Right. So that's well in training staff. Because Dustin and you have worked. I, well, I know Dustin was out there. Yeah, I skipped the morning part. I came in the afternoon. Gotcha. Yeah. So th there are four videos that we're working on. The first one, uh, the, the idea of it is what does a firefighter look like? <clears throat> and it 
it, yeah, it's somewhat about diversity, mm -hmm. but not really. Right. You know, it's, hey, what does a firefighter look like? It may look like you. Mm -hmm. It looks like me. Um, <clears throat> but a firefighter looks like courage. Firefighter looks like dedication, and there's scenes imagery that goes with each one of those things. I'm I'm excited to see it. I think it's gonna look pretty cool. Yeah, no, this is gonna be great, and I think it's exactly what we've been kind of looking for as far as that game changer for us. Right. But it just just it's not just CAFMA though. This is doing no. something great for the whole fire service, and it's really putting us back out there. I I think so. the 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 next video is gonna be more specific operations, um, and that's gonna set the expectation. And, and we need to speak or talk as a group and have a dialogue as a small committee that says, how do we set reasonable expectations? What, what scenes would set that, that realistic expectation of what we do? And I can already picture uh, Zach Ducharme, who's going to star in it. Oh, good. He was very disappointed yesterday. I know. <laughs> um, you know, with a, a either washing the engine, sweeping the floor, uh, making dinner for the crews, you know, something that shows a pride in what we do, mm -hmm. right? Um, maybe an EMS call, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, there'll be some fire because yeah. that's what we do and it's it's related to the, we'll do something at the training center. Yeah. But setting the realistic expectation with a direct draw, with a um, call to action at the end that says visit, visit our website here to get your application today, mm -hmm. right? Um, the third video targets collegiate athletes. Perfect. You know, Do you that, need me to go um, to Nebraska and try to recruit some of those guys? Uh, you can. If you could maybe – you make that phone call to, to the coaching staff. I don't know if they'll how's, take – How's Nebraska doing this year? Well, so far we're 2-2. Two and two, So, I mean, we got that going for us. Well, apparently better than U of A. Yeah. According um, to the new town manager. Yeah, U of A is uh, – they just lost to NAU, so. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. So target NAU athletes first maybe before U of A. Yeah. Or is that throwing some shade? I don't care. I don't – I don't know. I'm going to be, I want to be careful because I'm from St. Louis, so I'm not into the uh, rivalries. That's true. Well, the I mean, state. the Cardinals have plenty of rivalries though, but uh, I think you guys are still fighting for a wild card spot, right? Oh, uh, possibly. I haven't been watching them. Okay. We need to segue this into a sports show at some point right. too, by the yeah, way. Yeah, we could do a sports show at yeah. some point. But, you know, the video, what we're going to do is ask some of our former collegiate and semi-professional athletes mm -hmm. to uh, be interviewed. You know, how, why did you make the transition? What, what led you down this path? And mm -hmm. we talked to Evan on the podcast and, and he talked about kind of happenstance. Yeah, I thought it felt a little <clears throat> moist in the chair and on the floor, maybe some sweat was still. Yeah, you know, we told him though, we said, look, as you, because Evan's doing a lot of the work in the video for, mm -hmm. for the, uh, the promotional video. Mm -hmm. We told him, we said, look, your ability to sweat is yeah. perfect. God we need him. that he's, in that video. He's so, that was so funny. She's not on the podcast. Uh, but that's a video that we can take that, that Adam and, and us can use to go to the colleges, go to uh, the high schools and talk about this profession. Yeah. And we, we want to take that in person and take some of those collegiate athletes that are in the video and have them there to speak on what this job is and why, why it takes an athlete mm -hmm. to be a firefighter. I mean, it really does. So we've got that one. The fourth video is going to be in, uh, just an overview of CAFMA as an organization so that when we are hiring uh, for tech services or fleet or whatever, that we've got something that highlights all of the different divisions. And I think I was talking to, I think it was Dustin maybe yesterday. Uh, I talked about that video and he said, man, that'll be a good recruit video even for operations mm -hmm. because people see, wow. This organization is progressive. They do a lot of great things. This is a place I, I want to grow and, and work with. You bet. And if I could throw a shout out to like IT comms uh, with the new hire academy, right. they came in early today and they went over the radios and, the, and a very detailed communications um, process, but uh, between fleet services, prevention, all of the divisions that we have, we'll bring in finance because right. gosh, without them, where would we be? Yeah. So, nothing happens. Yeah. So this way the new hires get to meet everybody in the organization, but see what they're about and how every um, division in our organization all works right. um, intertwined together, you know, um, to collaborate with our success. Well, and, and we walk them through HR, walks them through uh, retirement planning, explains their benefits. Uh, we want to get their significant others in if they have them so we can talk to them. Uh, Jonah hits on cybersecurity, vitally important. Mm -hmm. Stop clicking on stuff. <laughs> Just 
Knock it off. Yeah. And that's for all the current people too. Jonah, that's for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, you know, because cybersecurity is a huge problem for us today. Mm -hmm. And so they get that in the academy besides the hands-on. Mm -hmm. And like yesterday, we had a chance to talk to them more about culture and expectations of the organization, just in brief over lunch. Um, but it was great to sit and, and, and chat with these folks. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's the fourth video. Then there's a fifth video. And the fifth video goes along with something that uh, Kathy in the front office put together for us. Before her and her husband decided to move here, she did significant research into the area to say, yes, the Quad Cities is where I want to live. I mean, proximity to uh, the pier in Santa Monica, proximity to Port of Penasco, mm -hmm. Las Vegas, Sedona, Jerome, um, Prescott National Forest for off-roading, hiking, biking. Jeeping. Uh, jeeping, yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. Kayaking, uh, which our wives go out yeah. and do. They love to go out and do that stuff. There's so many things that are attractive to this area, proximity, weather, uh, you name it. Mm -hmm. And so she put this she put this page together and it was extremely informative, informative and the way she laid it out was awesome. And so I picked up the phone, I called Guy Rogenson with uh, Talking Glass Media here in uh, Prescott Valley and I said, hey, here's, well, I'm gonna send you this, take a look at it. Do you think you could help us make a video? And the reason I went with a different production company for that is because this one's not a CAFMA video. Yeah. This one is a Quad City, come see us type of promotional video. Mm -hmm. um, and he looked at it and said, oh, absolutely. Um, and he said, and I think I know just the person, third party to donate money to, to fund it. That's great. Which is so much better yeah. Yeah. Uh, for us because we, we are working with the community. This video is not just something for CAFMA to go to the chamber and whomever. Mm -hmm. Um, so when somebody goes to our recruiting page, so we're going to get the information out across the country, to all different sites, take them to our recruiting page. Um, and when they get to the recruitment page, they're going to have these short videos because people have short attention spans, mm -hmm. um, that highlight some amazing things about our organization and the area we work and the people who work here. Um, and then we're going to go out and actively promote working here in our community because think about it that the housing challenges are a problem but if we're promoting or recruiting from Yavapai College and mm -hmm. the local high schools they already live here mm -hmm. absolutely and you know same thing with there's already people who have been established here for a while right. maybe they're ready for that career change maybe working for uh, CAFMA is that career change right in, uh, as a firefighter somebody in prevention <clears throat> um, you know, we have a lot of veterans that live up here too that, man, you want to talk about fitting the bill. We'd love to bring yeah. some veterans in. Well, and that's the other part of, of doing away with the firefighter one and two requirement is our veterans, a lot of them could get EMT while they're in the military, but getting civilian firefighter one and two can be a challenge. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're an EMT and you're a veteran, come on in. Absolutely. And apply. We, you're, and honestly, this time around, we hired three Two veterans, one who's still in the reserve, mm -hmm. um, and what fantastic people they are! Oh yeah, um, you know we've, we're hiring people that, you know what they were, they're changing career fields. Think about uh, Russ and, and oh, yeah. Jake, Jake who left uh, air traffic control. Mm -hmm. to, who would think someone would leave air traffic control take that kind of pay cut yeah. uh, for community service? But man, Russ and, and, and Jake McIntyre, they are yeah, uh, they're they're examples to others of what it means to be committed to community. You bet. Uh, just as good of people. Uh, people as they are firefighters. So, yeah, and we've got some guys that have come in. The, uh, our, our seven that we just hired are uh, all different age ranges. Right. And they're all coming from different backgrounds. We all got to know each other a little bit more on Monday. Right. Just fantastic people. Yeah. No, and, and so I, th I think with these changes, one, we have to understand the, the, the changing environment that we have in the United States. People just are not committed to any one organization or profession for the long haul like they used to be. And they're certainly not as committed to civil type service. Mm -hmm. um, it's fast money, uh, get out, go on trips. Um, so that's something we have to work with. But I think there's enough variety in what we do, especially with our organization, mm -hmm. with, with everything we've talked about, that we're an attractive place to work. Mm -hmm. I think that our, our pay and benefits are coming along. The board was amazing yeah. at recognizing, hey, we have to be competitive because we don't want to recruit and then 
train them mm-hmm. and then lose that money because that's expensive and mm-hmm. start over again. Um, so the, the board has been fantastic working with labor has been good. Uh, they're helping get the word out. So I, I think we have a lot of good things on the horizon here. And just when I was talking to the recruits yesterday about the, the changing environment in which we live, the, the growth in our area, which we love to see, um, because that means more opportunity. We have a lot of retirements in the next five years, Eric. Oh, yeah. I mean, these guys that are starting yesterday, they could be a company officer in five years. Absolutely. Look at Russell Smith. He just promoted yeah. an engineer. He's in year four. Yeah. But if you're willing to put in the time and dedication, which obviously he has, yeah, you're going to promote as fast as you want to. Well, and Justin Veneta, how long has he been here? Already promoted an engineer? Yeah, three years. Yeah. An engineer. You bet. But, you know, again, though, these are great people. Oh, yeah. Oh, very dedicated. Mm-hmm. Uh, the cool thing is Justin's mom used to work here. Mm-hmm. His dad used to work here. And so uh, I know his dad generally pins on his badge, but when we offered him the job and when we offered him the promotion, I called his mom, yeah. Mary, and said, hey, um, can you do me a favor? It's an official call. Can you call Justin and ask him if he'd be willing to be promoted to engineer and call me back and let me know what he says. Yeah. <laughs> so she she loved it. Justin called back. He was so happy that his mom got to offer yeah. him. Uh, those things. So we, I think that's the other part of working for us is Mm -hmm. we, we really do, we're not perfect, but we really do try to make a family environment. Absolutely. And and you guys do a great job of trying to find ways to connect and try to find ways to add and incorporate the family to all the, all the avenues of what we do. Yeah, no. And and that's, I think that's vitally important. I think that's attractive to people. So um, with that, that's kind of where we are with recruiting. Here's the challenges. I think we're doing some exciting things um, to change our approach, uh, looking at different avenues and and putting some stuff out there. And Jonah just does an amazing job with our website and, and getting things together um, that, you know, it, it's really inviting. Mm-hmm. When you say, hey, Jonah, what does it take to do this? He's like, it's already done. Yeah. No, he's done that for me. He's, yeah. he's walked me through some <laughs> yeah. computer he's, issues before. It's amazing. And an amazing producer, by the way, yeah. too. So yeah. uh, with that, Eric, thank you so much for the last minute being willing to come on yeah. and discuss uh, recruitment with us and and retention of our employees, which we're also working on. And that's the whole pay and benefits and creating a, an environment people want to be involved with. Mm-hmm. Um, so with that, I, you know, I want to close this week with a, a shout out to our new recruits that just came here. Yeah. And folks, I want to ask you, don't lose that fire that you have today, that passion that you have today, uh, after you get off probation, mm-hmm. remember the commitment you made, what you told me when you came in, live your interview. And five years from now, you're going to do good things because I, I told him yesterday, um, the, the level of character that they had and the way that they presented, honestly, I, I felt like I wasn't interviewing for firefighters, interviewing for higher level mm-hmm. uh, leaders in the organization. And, and I think that's what we hired. And I think that's what we've been hiring. And so our bench is looking really good here and our, our future is looking fantastic as far as I'm concerned. So, you bet, you bet. Great. Until next week, welcome to all the recruits. Uh, Live your interview and have a good time with Eric. Yeah. Thank you. All right. I'll see you next week. Thanks.